In this video, we will review how to solve right triangles. We will pay special attention to sine, cosine, and tangent. Uh, know these definitions. If you are looking at an angle in a right triangle, across, well, first of all, the hypotenuse is across from the 90 degree angle. Now, across from the angle you're looking at uh, is called the opposite leg. Right next to the angle you're looking at is called the adjacent leg. Now, armed with those words, you can define sine, cosine, and tangent um, of the angle. Sine of the angle will be the opposite leg over the hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. Now, to make it easier to remember, we will sometimes say, just use SOHCAHTOA. And of course, that is the three definitions squeezed into one funny sounding word, where SO stands for sine is opposite over hypotenuse, CA, that's cosine, is adjacent over hypotenuse, and TOA, tangent, is opposite over adjacent. So if you can remember SOHCAHTOA, then you can remember all of your definitions. Okay, problem number one. For the triangle shown above, which equation is true? Okay, all three of these equations involve angle H. So let's circle angle H, and let's label the sides. So across from the 90 degree angle is the hypotenuse. Um, across from the angle that we circled will be the opposite side. And right next to the angle that we circled will be the adjacent side. Um, notice that the adjacent side is not marked with any numbers, so I'm going to really ignore that. And uh, look at, uh, so what would be sine? So sine of h, okay, keeping in mind SOHCAHTOA. Right, I'll write over here so ka hmm, toa Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so um, that would be 5 over 16. Okay, so sine is 5 over 16. Cosine would be adjacent over hypotenuse, but we have no number there, so it's not going to be that because adjacent is a no-go. And uh, you know what? Tangent is also a no-go because it also involves adjacent. So um, the answer better be A, all right? The sine of H is 5 over 16, and that's what we found. So the answer is going to be A. OK, for the triangle above, which of these must have the same value as the sine of F? Well, there's a theorem that we learned that said uh, in a right triangle, if you're talking about the two acute angles, um, then the sine of one angle will equal the cosine of the other angle. All right, so the sine of F should equal the cosine of H. So they're saying um, which of these must have the same value as the sine of F? So the sine of F must equal the cosine of H. So the answer is going to be C. Okay, by the way, we could have switched it the other way around, and we could have said the sine of H. And what should that equal? That should equal the cosine of F. So the sine of one angle will equal the cosine of the other angle. Okay, what is the missing side length of the triangle above? Now, this whole SOHCAHTOA business is all about angles, okay? When we talk about sine, cosine, and tangent, in every single case, we're talking about an angle, the theta. Um, but now we're talking about only sides, all sides, all right? They're asking us to find the missing side. When you're dealing with all sides of a right triangle, you are dealing with the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, and the Pythagorean theorem says leg squared plus leg squared 
equals the hypotenuse squared. That's the Pythagorean theorem. Of course, the hypotenuse is 16, so make sure that the 16 is over here in the hypotenuse position. So um, my legs are x and 5. OK, so there's your Pythagorean theorem. So that's going to give me x squared plus 25 is equal to, all right, I should know what this is, but it's escaping me at the moment. I was going to guess that. Um, so is equal to 256. And then we will subtract that uh, 25 from both sides. All right, so that's going to give us um, x squared is equal to 221. Sorry, let's make that 231. And then we have to take the square root of both sides. So that means that x is equal to the square root of 231. But we are looking for a decimal. So let's go ahead and put that in the calculator. So square root of 231. And for a moment, it just gives me that back again. But hit the toggle key, and you've got your decimal. 15.199, got to round up. So the answer is A. Okay, so this question is not related to the picture above. So when you have two complementary angles, wait, the tangent, which of the following must also be true? Okay, when you have two complementary angles, remember uh, what we did above. We, uh, there was a rule that we knew. Let me erase this to just remind you of what we said. Okay, remember how we said that the sine of one angle is equal to the cosine of the other angle. Okay, now there is another rule that involves tangent. Okay, um, let's see. Imagine that this was 5, 12, um, and so that would make this 13. Okay, so the tangent of angle F uh, would be Right, so I'm looking at angle F, so that's opposite and that's adjacent, so that would be 12 over 5. Now, let's look at the tangent of the other angle. The tangent of H, okay, if I'm looking at the H, 5 is opposite and 12 is adjacent, so that would be 5 over 12. So the tangent of one angle and the tangent of the other angle, they are reciprocals of each other. See how they're upside down. All right, so that's something that we've memorized. Okay, now they did not give us a picture, and here they've given us these numbers. All right, so I mean, here's the here's the deal. Um, complementary angles. So even though they did not draw us a picture, we could draw our own picture if we really wanted to. So imagine that one angle is 11. Um, to find the other angle, I would just do 90 minus 11. All right, they must be complementary. They have to add up to 90. So that would be 79. So one angle is 11, and the other angle is 79. OK. So if the tangent of one angle is 7 over 36, then the tangent of the other angle must be 36 over 7. All right. They are reciprocals of each other. So that's why the answer is going to be C. The tangent of 79 will be 36 over 7. The tangent of one angle and the tangent of the other angle are reciprocals of each other. OK. Circle all that apply. Cosine of W is this. Okay, we're looking for equations that are true. 
So, all right, let's just take these one at a time. Uh, they're mentioning angle W, so I'm going to circle that. Of course, 23 is the hypotenuse. Um, the side across from the W um, is the opposite side, and the side next to the W is the adjacent side. So cosine, um, remember SOKATOA, better write that down, SOKATOA. All right, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that would be 18 over 23. All right, and that is what we have. So that one is true. Okay, the next one says tangent of 51.5. So that represents a change in perspective. So I need to erase all that and relabel things. So now I'm talking about this angle, so I circle this. The hypotenuse is still the hypotenuse. But across from the angle that I just circled, now that makes this the opposite side. Right next to the angle, that makes this the adjacent side. Now tangent, that's TOA, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So that would be 18 over P. Hmm, but this says P over 18, so that's wrong. All right, it needs to be 18 over P opposite over adjacent. So I'm not going to circle that one, all right? I'm just going to put an X through it to show that we've already considered it and we've rejected it. Okay, these other ones, well, okay, I started to say they don't involve angles, but that's not true. These are angles. Um, so let's take a look. I have something plus something plus something equals 180. And that's W, uh, 51.5, and 90. Sure, if you add up all the angles inside of a triangle, uh, you're definitely going to get 180. So that's definitely a true statement. So let's circle that one. Hmm, this looks familiar. This looks like the Pythagorean theorem. It's just a matter of is everything in the right place. Remember, the Pythagorean theorem is supposed to be um, leg squared plus leg squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. That's the Pythagorean theorem. Um, so close, but um, for example, I mean the hypotenuse is 23, and here they have a P here, all right? P is not the hypotenuse, so this is in the wrong order to be true. So we are definitely not going to circle that one. So it's only these two uh, that are true. Okay, find the side length marked X. Great, so I see there's an angle involved, so um, you can bet we're going to wind up doing SOKATOA. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down. Let's circle the angle that we've got and label the sides. Across from, well first the hypotenuse. Across from the 90 degree angle is going to be always the hypotenuse. Now across from the angle that we circled, we call that the opposite leg. Right next to the angle, we call that the adjacent leg. The opposite leg has nothing going on. All right, it doesn't have a value. There's no variable that we're looking for. So forget about the opposite leg. And uh, the sine function involves the opposite leg, see the O. So we're not going to use that. The tangent function involves the opposite leg as well. So we're going to throw that out. So that just leaves cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So we will say cosine of the angle is equal to the adjacent leg over the hypotenuse, 14 over x. Okay, so now it's time to solve this equation. When you solve an equation that has the variable in the denominator, the easiest thing to do is to switch these, swap these. So the x is going to go over here. And the cosine 44 will become the denominator. So I'll, I will have 14 over cos. Whoops. I lost the S. Let's try that again. Cosine 44. And this is something that I can simply put in my calculator. 
Okay, 14 over cosine 44. That's 19.462. All right, find the side length marked x. Well, I see that we have an angle in, uh, involved again. So you can bet that we will once again be using good old SOCA-TOA sine, cosine, or tangent. The hypotenuse is across from the 90 degree angle. All right, across from the angle that I circled will be the opposite leg. Right next to the angle is the adjacent leg. Uh, the adjacent leg has nothing going on. There's no value here, there's no variable that we are looking for. Throw it out. Uh, cosine involves adjacent, so throw that out. Tangent involves adjacent, so throw that out. So we will be using the sine function today. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So we will say sine of the angle we circled, 54, is equal to um, opposite over hypotenuse, so 11, uh, 11 over x. This is just like the last problem. When the variable is in the denominator, we swap these. So this is going to be x is equal to 11 over sine 54. And this is something that you can put in your calculator. 11 over sine 54. 13.597 got around up. Okay, number eight, once again, involves an angle. All right, this time it's an unknown angle, but it's still an angle. So you can bet we will still be doing so katoa. Okay, the hypotenuse is across from the 90 degree angle. Across from the angle that we circled, that will be the opposite leg. Right next to the angle will be the adjacent leg. So, hypotenuse is doing nothing. There's no value here. There's no variable that we are looking for. Um, sine involves the hypotenuse. Throw it out. Cosine involves the hypotenuse. Throw it out. So we will be using tangent. So the equation will go tangent of the angle we circled, which is x is equal to opposite over adjacent. So that's 12 over 16. All right, when the variable is inside the function, that's when we do the inverse trig function. So x will equal the inverse tangent of 12 over 16. And this is something we can put in the calculator. All right, inverse tangent, we do second tangent and then 12 over 16. All right, so 36.869, hmm, got to round up. And that's a nine, so think of this as 69, which rounds up to 70. So this will be 36.870. Okay. Alright guys, that's going to do it for this video. Go ahead and click here in the red apple to watch the next video. Click in the green apple to subscribe or click the yellow apple for the full playlist.